this screencast will explain in very basic terms how to send and receive encrypted email. Please be advised that while not all of the information presented here is fact or even accurate, there is truth in it, and hopefully understanding. So without further ado, meet Ron and Jill. Ron and Jill are tragic lovers whose families can't stand each other. Every time they write love notes to one another, a meddling paranoid family member intercepts the letter and fierce battles are inevitably fought. And it gets old. And you get the idea. Ron and Jill need a way to send each other their love notes without being read by anyone else. One evening in a game of poker, the apothecary runs out of money, so he gives a strong box to Ron to cover his losses. This strong box is just what Ron needs to send love notes to Jill. So Ron gives Jill the box, leaving it open for her to fill. This box is his public key, and Ron keeps the private key for himself. And that's pretty much how email encryption works. When you get someone's public key, you gain the ability to send messages that only they can open. Uh, then Jill writes a love letter and seals it inside Ron's public key strongbox. Having received the strong box without incident, Ron opens it and retrieves the letter. Jill is so excited about the success of their transmission that she decides to get her own strong box to give Ron so the process can be repeated in reverse. So now Ron and Jill can send nasty letters back and forth without anyone else reading them. You see how this works, right? Back in 1991, Phil Zimmerman made the source code for his encryption software freely available. The software was named Pretty Good Privacy, or PGP, and it quickly became the global standard for email encryption. Once the United States government decided not to prosecute Phil for exporting encryption technology, he founded a company, that company was bought and sold, and PGP became commercialized. What we will be installing is GNU Privacy Guard, or GPG, a free public licensed encryption suite that's fully compatible with PGP. You'll learn how to use GPG to generate public and private key pair and to import the public keys you receive from others. Step one, obviously, is to download and install GPG. So go to the GPG for Win website and click download GPG for Win. And click download whatever's the newest version. Uh, and when it finishes saving, we will double click the installer and English I guess next yes we agree of course this uh, GNU PG component is uh, not optional it's the main component of GPG for Win uh, so you have to leave this checked uh, Cleopatra is basically a key ring it lets you generate your public and private key pair and also lets you manage the public keys that other people send you. Uh, so you need this. Uh, the GNU Privacy Assistant sounds like something you don't need. Uh, GPGOL is a plugin for Microsoft Office Outlook. Uh, however, there have been reports that this particular plugin uh, causes some instability in Windows 8 and uh, other certain circumstances. So instead of using this particular plugin, we'll be using a uh, different plugin for Outlook. Uh, so we'll uncheck this. Uh, the shell extension lets you right-click on files and choose encrypt or decrypt. It's very handy for uh, sending encrypted attachments in emails. So we'll leave that. Uh, Clause Mail is an email client that I don't have, so I'll leave this unchecked and this is just documentation. So next. Yes, I'm okay with where it's installing. And that's fine, that's fine. And when it's completed, we'll just click next. No, I don't need to see that. Hit finish. And in your start menu you will see Cleopatra. Before you can uh, decrypt or encrypt anything, you have to generate keys for yourself. The way you do that is, within Cleopatra, you go to the File menu and go to New Certificate. You're presented with two options here. The second option 
requires a subscription to a, a certificate service such as GeoTrust or similar. Uh, the first option basically allows you to create your own trust network among your peers, letting you self-sign your certificate and certify each other's keys. So we'll go with the free option here. Uh, these first two fields are required. And the third field is optional, so we'll just skip that and click Next and Create Key. Now if you are obsessive compulsive and you want to generate some more randomness you can drag this window around and um, enter some garbage in this uh, window here before you enter your passphrase but it's all optional uh, the passphrase is not though you have to have that okay the key pair has been generated now at some point in the future you will probably have to reinstall Windows or you might get a new computer at some point uh, so you need to keep a, a copy of this key pair that you just created um, so we'll make a backup and uh, just for now we'll store it on the desktop and uh, ah. and it's done and we can put it on a flash drive and stick it in a drawer or uh, whatever you feel is appropriate um, second thing we ought to do is uh, export the public key uh, to allow other people to send us encrypted emails uh, the way you do that is you just highlight this uh, certificate that you made and export certificates. Now bear in mind this will only export the public version of the uh, key, basically your strong box. Uh, this file name here is uh, the fingerprint for the key. It's kind of complicated um, but it's it's handy to uh, provide to your recipients even though the file name is very long. I think I'll just uh, cut this to the clipboard and uh, replace it with my email address and there it's been exported. If I want to send this to someone I just open a new message and uh, I'll send it to someone um, public key fingerprint what we just cut to the paste uh, to the clipboard and don't forget to attach it and we'll send it and import it later so here's the email that I sent myself and uh, down here you see I've got it attached I went ahead and uh, downloaded that attachment and saved it and here it is uh, now I'll show you how to import that into Cleopatra. Um, basically all you have to do is drag the file and drop it onto Cleopatra and then click import certificates and one imported. Uh, before we can do anything with this there are two things we need to do to it. Uh, number one we have to certify it. Number two we have to trust it. Uh, so, uh, if you look in uh, Trusted Certificates here, you'll see uh, that key that I just imported from the uh, OIT help email does not exist here. It's uh, sitting here in imported certificates waiting to be trusted, I guess. Um, so, we'll go to, uh, we'll right click on this key and change owner trust. And I'm pretty sure I know who. I am who I say I am, so I believe the checks are accurate. Okay, okay, and we'll also certify the certificate. Even though we trusted it, you see it's, no, it's still not in trusted certificates. Uh, we still have to certify it. So, um, click the checkbox here, and Yes, that's the same fingerprint.
there's the fingerprint from the key and there's the fingerprint contained within the key so they match uh, click next yes certify and success I hit finish and now we can use this key to send encrypted emails to OIT help from this uh, Gmail account. As you can see here, I've uh, done the same thing in reverse, uh, sending the public key from my uh, Gmail virtual machine uh, to my uh, host machine and uh, imported the public key and I uh, trusted it and uh, uh, certified it. So now I'm ready to send an email uh, from uh, my Outlook account to the Gmail account. Uh, you remember during the uh, GPG for Win setup, I mentioned the uh, GPG OL plugin for Outlook was something I was going to skip. Um, I skipped that so that I could use the Outlook privacy plugin. Um, this plugin is available from this website and uh, basically just download and unzip it and there's an installer program the installer will install .NET 4.5 if you don't already have it and will prompt you for a reboot and this plugin uh, seems to be uh, very slick for a beta uh, the only hiccup I encountered was after rebooting I got an error message saying uh, the plugin couldn't connect to some service somewhere, uh, but I simply reran the setup file and it completed normally. And uh, I'll show you the result. When you go to Outlook and go to New Email, I'll send an encrypted message to my Gmail account. Uh, this message is encrypted. And I'll show you how this works. Hello world. And just for good measure, I'll attach a picture of my daughter to the email and we'll show you how it encrypts. So first you sign. This is what the uh, Outlook privacy plugin does. Uh, adds these uh, open PGP buttons up here. Uh, so first you sign, then uh, encrypt. And you'll notice the uh, message gets converted to plain text. Uh, apparently this Outlook privacy plugin doesn't support HTML messages yet. Uh, as my understanding it's in the works. Uh, but for now we'll deal with plain text messages and attachments. Um, and when you hit send you're prompted uh, for the uh, passphrase for your signature. And the message goes. Now, what actually gets sent is this. Um, if you want, you can decrypt it and read it from your sent items, but you see even the attachment has been encrypted. As you can see, in this uh, virtual machine in my Gmail account, I've received the encrypted message I sent myself. Uh, before I can uh, decrypt and view it, I have to configure a browser plugin. Now the best plugin that I've found so far is called Mailvelope. Uh, right now, Mailvelope is only available as a Google Chrome extension. It appears there's a Firefox add-on in development, but um, Google Chrome for right now is uh, the best web browser to use uh, for interacting with encrypted email via the web. Uh, for Gmail and Yahoo and so forth. I uh, went ahead and installed the Melvelope uh, extension. Uh, after doing so, this icon appeared. You just click this icon and uh, go to Options. Now, Melvelope does not interact directly with GNU PG the same way the Outlook plugin does. Uh, so we have to manually import uh, the keys that we're going to use. Now, um, uh, to do that, we go into Cleopatra, and we first have to export the key that we're going to import. Uh, so, 
Cleopatra, right click on uh, the certificate and export secret keys. Now I'm going to show you how to do this incorrectly first, just to show you what happens. Um, when you export a key, um, you need to uh, when you export a key to uh, import into Melvelope, you need to check mark this ASCII armor box. Um, if you don't, uh, the file will keep a .gpg extension and will be exported as binary. Uh, what that means is uh, basically a bunch of non-text characters are included. And you see all these uh, boxes and uh, extended characters and so forth, uh, non-printable characters, and uh, it just confuses Melvelope. If you try to submit that, you'll get an error. Um, best thing is to uh, export it as ASCII. Uh, go back to uh, export secret key and uh, we'll just do the same thing except this time we'll check the uh, ASCII armor checkbox. You'll see the uh, file extension has uh, changed here, um, which indicates it's a uh, it's basically a plain text file. If we uh, import that file. Um, you'll see it's base64 encoded. There are no extended characters. It's just, uh, alphanumeric with a bunch of pluses and slashes and so forth. Um, and if we submit that, you'll see we have a, a little greater success. Uh, now that we've imported that key, we should be able to open this encrypted email. Um, as you can see, uh, Mailvelope will automatically detect uh, any kind of PGP encryption and uh, hover this graphic over it. You just click that envelope and enter your secret key and the message will be decrypted. Um, as far as the attachment goes, uh, that can't be decrypted within the web page itself. Uh, you'll have to download that to your hard drive and uh, and then decrypt it here. Um, if you try to open it the way it is, Windows is going to say, what the hell are you doing? Uh, so you have to decrypt it first. Basically just right click on this file and choose decrypt and verify. And when you hit decrypt down here, uh, you, you might be prompted for your uh, certificate's passcode. Uh, just enter it if so and hit OK. And there is the graphic. Uh, double click that and there's a picture of my daughter. Lovely. Now say you wanted to send an encrypted response to this message. Uh, before you can do that you have to import your intended recipient's uh, public key into Melvelope. Um, so we'll go back to the Melvelope options and import keys and uh, here's the key the recipient sent us and submit great success and there it is in the list. We should be able to uh, send an encrypted response to this now. So just click reply and if you want to compose your message encrypted uh, click this uh, this button that Melvelope adds and this message will self bah. Well, self-destruct. Nice picture. Um, we click this lock icon, and we'll be prompted who we'd like to encrypt this message for. Um, you can, only the people in this list down here will be able to decrypt the message. Uh, so, since we just added this key, it's become available as a recipient. Um, so we'll click Add, and we'll click OK. And there's the encrypted message. We'll transfer this message back into Gmail, and uh, this is what will be sent. Um, since you didn't list yourself as a recipient, uh, you won't be able to decrypt the message. And if we want to see the result, we come back over here, and there's the message that was just sent.
Uh, we can open that in its own window. And the uh, Outlook Privacy plugin will allow us to decrypt and view it. There it is. That's uh, how to encrypt and decrypt emails.